Hello there. We have this photo of Sunny Taylor, and we are going to be um, removing some things that I don't like about it. Super pretty picture. Uh, I saw my friend Steve posted it on Facebook. I was like, man, that's an excellent picture, but there's things that bother me about it. So um, I'm not sure if this was a cell phone capture or if we took it with a camera, but either way, um, it's not the highest quality. I stole it from Facebook. He couldn't find the original, but we're still going to, um, to do a little bit of work to this just to make it an excellent portrait. Um, things that I like about this picture is this rich red color over here on the left. Um, things I'm not super thrilled about is this pole right here. It just sort of interrupts Sunny right here, it, and it bothers me. I feel like it could be a better portrait if we didn't have this pole. Um, we might take out the truck. We might do something about this house. Let's just kind of see where we go. So I'm going to start. There's, let me start by saying there's a lot of ways to do everything in Photoshop. This is my way. This is how I would do it. Your way might be just as good. It could be better. Um, so show me what you got. I'd love to see a better way to do this if you have that. But this is my way. So I'm going to start by just selecting Sunny. I used my um, quick selection tool over here. I'm going to go into plus mode right up here so I can add. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see already that you know it's kind of a low quality image because I stole it from Facebook. That's OK, though. It'll work for this tutorial. So we are just going to haphazardly select Sunny, his tail. I do want this part of the porch. Now, you see I got a whole bunch of things I don't want. And I've actually missed some things I do want. So I'm going to go right up here. I'm still in plus mode. And I'm just clicking and dragging what I want to select. Um, to move around this, I use my actually the palm of my hand to press the space bar and scoot this around. My palm just kind of stays on the space bar. Um, when I press it, I can drag. When I let go, I'm back in selection mode. So now I'm going to grab my minus tool. I made a selection there I don't want. And use the palm on the space bar to move around. And then we're just going to take out, because I'm in the minus, take out what I don't want. Don't want any of this. Basically, I just want sunny because we're going to make him a new layer so we can work with everything underneath him without affecting him because without Sunny, this picture would be nothing. So I think that's good. Let me zoom in here. This is a little wonky. See if I can just like clean that up a little bit. And maybe let me see if I can. I went back to plus mode here. I'm just going to try to get a little bit more. It's super tough because we're, you know, if, it, if this was a black dog and a white pole, this would be easier. But I chose a picture with a white dog and a white pole. Cream. He's not white. He's cream. He was a puppy photo. Good boy. All right. Yeah. Nope. Here we go. All right. So. Dog is selected. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Now you go down here. We have this layer. Um, Photoshop works in layers. You can think about it like adding. Um, you have a, a something on a table and you lay a piece of glass over it. The glass has a drawing on it or some changes on it. So you're just layering things up. Um, super convenient. So if you do something you don't like, you can just throw away the layer. Um, it's a non-destructive way to work. And that is how to effectively work in Photoshop. So you can't really see the layer. I, I could drag them around. We can turn them on and off. That's fine. So we just kind of want that to stay back where it came from and keep them there for a while. So the first thing I'm going to do is find something to put in place of this pole. I'm going to go work on my background layer. I can even turn this off. Um, it will be more apparent in a minute. So I want to take this bush and we are going to just select it and yes i have the dog totally fine control c to copy control v to paste look we've made a new layer control t to transform all of these keyboard shortcuts you can also do through your menus um everything most everything has a keyboard shortcut i use some and i don't use others 
Um, that's just how I work. So we're going to right click, flip horizontal, and we're just going to stick it right about here. So if I were to press this layer back on, this is our sunny layer. We have this. I'm still going to keep it muted though, or off. And I'm going to work exclusively on this layer here and see, kind of just like, I'm, oh, I hit E to erase. It's right here. The eraser, you can just select the eraser tool. I tend to hit E. It's easier for me to remember E to erase. And I'm just going to kind of go in and soften this edge. And turn it on. That's going to need to come out. See that like extra head? So I'm just going to hit the S, the clone stamp. It's right here. Super fun. I'm using my bracket keys to make this smaller. Um, the left bracket makes it smaller, right bracket makes it bigger. Just going to Alt and click to save my, to select my space. And then go down here. There we go. Change my mode to normal. My opacity to 100%. And we're just going to like take out his head. There we go. So now when I turn my sunny layer back on, we're looking pretty good. We got rid of a lot of the pole. This is not perfect. That's okay. You don't have to be perfect yet. So now to do something about this. Oh, I'm just going to crop out. We're going to make life easy. Then I go to the crop tool. C is the crop tool. Right now I have it set at 8 by 10 by 300 DPI or pixels per inch. Sorry. Um, that's where I normally would crop anything at. So this is just oh, a Facebook image. It's already 72 pixels per inch. I deleted everything in here so I can just pick whatever size I want. And we're just going to. Do we need that? Probably not. Right? I don't need this pole over here. It's not adding anything. I'm just going to take out the roof, the hummingbird feeder, all of that. Um, but before I do that, I've changed my mind. Pretend I never did that. I might want to use some of this to help cover this. So let's not take it out yet. All right. So we want to work on this. I'm going to go with the clone stamp. I'm still working on, I'm going to go to my background layer here. Select my clone stamp. You can hit S for stamp. I'm using my bracket keys to make this a little bit bigger. So we got this nice bright tree. Alt, click. I've let go of Alt, and I'm going to come over here and just easy peasy fill this in. So when you're cloning, you want to... Select a large area to cover a large area. Um, if you only have a little bit to work with, you're going to get like a weird repeating pattern. I'm going to alt click and just. Um, so if you're just like re clicking, you're just going to get this weird repeating and then everyone's going to know that you cloned it. It's going to look super obvious. So large areas to cover as much as you can. I know a lot of this is going to get um, cropped out anyway, so I'm good with it. I see a line here. So this is like dark, that's light. Let's see if we can find some dark right here. Just sort of throw up through there. There we go. No one will ever know. That's good. I see something there. Maybe it's part of the pole. Awesome. Cool. I like that. Where did this crop go? Did we crop? We did crop. I'm looking here in my history, my before and after. I did not see when we cropped that. Um, I'm not going to go with it. So we're just going to kind of run back to here where we were. Work on this again. All right. So Alt. Oh, I'm going to go here to my background layer. Alt click and just cover this up. There we go. So I'm kind of running back over here to re-click in a different area. 
alt click back over here. I know that I'm going to be taking out this part up here, so I'm not terribly worried about it. And we're also going to fix this right here where the bush goes into this pole. Um, while we're over here, let's see what we can do about the truck. Kind of close. I'm using my bracket keys again, left and right, to make it bigger and smaller. And we're just going to alt-click. And we're going to get into a repeating pattern, I think. Maybe not. Mm. Let's just find something similar. See if we can just like put that in. So you guys might see it. I might see it. I doubt that anyone new looking at this image is going to be like, oh my gosh, I see this window here also over there. So we're going to go with it. All righty. Now I want to go back to this bush and fix up this pole. So I'm going to go to a layer. I'm going to hit E to erase. And I'm at 100%. And I'm just going to get this edge back, see where it is. If at any point you're like, oh, what does it look like without it? You can just toggle your layer on and off with this little eyeball. All right. So you see there, I just erased and then we got the pull back. We don't want that. That was the thing we're trying to cover. And then also you can see this straight line right here. We don't want that. There we go. Zoom in. That's the pole. So we're going to cover that. Probably have a straight line down here too. There we go. And it helps me just to kind of see my edges to make sure I did everything well when I toggle it on and off. Like there's this that appears right here. I don't know what that is, but I can go in here and erase it. And since Sunny is a layer, um, I'm not going to erase him. So I can kind of work around. So there we go. That's good. Wow, this is coming together. I'm super excited. This bothers me. Um, it's just a bright thing that we don't really care about seeing. So I'm going to go to my background layer. And I'm going to select the burn tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is O. That's not one I typically use, but in case you want to use it. Um, Mid-tones, exposure, maybe up just a hair. You can change your exposure with this slider, or you can just click here and drag back and forth. 46% is fine. And let's just see if we can just darken this up a little bit. I might still just take it out. Meh. Let's see. Let's hit our clone stamp. And I'm right clicking right here. Let's see. And then I'm I'm looking closely to line up my earth. Because if we start up here, then all of a sudden the earth is jumped up. We don't want that. So alt click. Put it right there. Drag, drag, drag. We're just going to see how this looks. See what I can do to kind of make it look different. We don't want this tree. Alt click right here. Do that. See how that looks. That's okay. Um, blur tool. Using my brackets again to make it bigger and smaller. Nope. That was not good. Strength. A little less. Nah, we're just going to leave it. Um, so if I do something I don't like, so I put that on there, I'm like, oh, that's awful. I'm hitting Control Z to undo. Control Z. Um, and you can actually go back multiple steps with Control Z. But we're just going to leave it like that. I think that's fine. I'm looking right here at the bush. I'm going to run back over to that. Hit E to erase. Fix this up a little bit. That's the pole. So I'm going to go to my background layer. 
hit S for my clone stamp. Alt click right here. There we go. That's better. And then let's throw this crop on there. And we're going to take out that pole because it does nothing for me. And hit enter. Guys, I'm good with this. What do you think? So we have all these layers. If I were to save it, um, if you save it as a JPEG, it's going to flatten all of your layers together. That means like I'll no longer have a separate dog, a separate bush, and all of that. So if you think, okay, this is all right, but I'm going to come back later and work on it, leave it as a PSD file so you keep all of your layers. If you're like, nope, this is good, I love it, um, I'm going to flatten it, you can go ahead and do that. You can do that with filter, let's see, layer, there we go, flatten image. Or if you have my actions, it is F8. So I'm going to flatten this and then just do a little bit of adjusting, not too much. I'm brightening it up just a little bit using my um, actions here. You can also do all of this through your adjustments. I recommend asking me for the actions. I'll send them to you. I'm just going to use my 100% brush to kind of brush this back in. So now I've bright and sunny and the porch up a little bit and this dark bush, but I'm leaving everything else bright or leaving everything else a little bit darker. And I'm going to hit F8 to flatten. And then I'm going to pull up my saturation slider, say OK, and just bring this up a little bit, say OK. Eh, it didn't make much of a difference. I think it's good. Hit F8 to flatten. And it's something I do on most of my pictures, the black vignettes. Draw your eye, your subject's eye to the, sorry, draw your audience's eye to the thing you want them to look at, which of course is Sonny. He's not going to look at him, but just in case, kind of help the eye go towards the subject. And you toggle it on and off. See, oh wow, that makes a, just a subtle difference, not too much. I think. And one last thing. So you could work on an image for hours. Like there's always something you can do to make it better. Knowing when to stop is a great skill that I don't always have. But I just want to fill in this white area. It's just bothering to the eye, Let's see if we can just like do to do, meh, that works. I'm good with it. Make sure it's all flattened. I'll bring this down, just a hair, and we're done. So don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, send me a comment. If you have a better way, I'd love to see it. Just go ahead and send that over to me. And um, thanks so much for watching.